Hello everyone. So you might be noticing two things. One, this isn't a Liberty Lost Lore video. I didn't want to do a Liberty Lost Lore video because, well, I was bored repeating lore and I wanted to clear some stuff up. And secondly, you might be noticing a different style. Yes, I diverted from Among Us. What are you going to do? I hate Among Us. Just stop! STOP! So... Because I wanted to test out the new style and I didn't want to do liberal loss, I decided to do a filler video on my ideology, libertarianism. Now, some of you might not have heard of libertarianism, or the only reason you know of libertarianism is from the memes. I will get to that later. So, let me define what it means. Now, I am talking about libertarian capitalism, or the uh, US definition. I have heard in Europe that. Libertarianism is more in line with the left, while in the United States is more the right. So, with that out of the way, I will tell you what libertarianism is. So, in the simplest way possible, a libertarian is someone who believes in high economic, high legal, and social freedom. Well, sort of. As well as individualism and anti-statism, no matter how moderate or how radical you are. While it is an ongoing debate between the libertarian community who is libertarianism and who is not, well, it's a very big debate. I've partaken in it as well, calling people not libertarian, including some of my friends who call themselves libertarians when they actually aren't. Hey, I heard that. You got a threat on the political compass test, so you can shut it. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty touchy topic. Now that I have defined libertarianism, I will be going through the sub-ideologies. <laughs> Marching home again, hurrah, hurrah We'll give it a hearty welcome then, hurrah, hurrah the men they... Okay, these ideologies are considered semi-libertarians, meaning they have some libertarian ideals and some not-so-much libertarian ideals. So let's start with the most common semi-libertarian, the conservative libertarian. These guys can be summed up as pretty much conservatives with slight libertarian values. Think Ben Shapiro and Rand Paul. These quote-unquote libertarians are probably the most distasteful ones, considering they call themselves libertarians, and which they aren't. They actually align more with constitutional conservatism, but I'll give them the benefit of doubt. Let's call you conservative libertarians. On the left side of the field, we have social libertarianism, Georgism. Social libertarianism is basically libertarianism, but with welfare, statism, and higher taxes. The ideology's biggest proponent recently has been Andrew Yang with his plans for UBI, but unlike other status ideologies, they are libertarian legally. However, a few subsistently authoritarian tweets Andrew Yang put out is kind of uh, making it a little bit more complicated. But other than that, they are cool, and they value the free market. Georgism is another ideology similar to this. They got their views from classical liberalism, but believe that natural resources, rent, and other things deriving from personal land should be shared between all societies. So basically, commie capitalists. Liberty, hurrah, hurrah. Mexicans, I will underpay with roses. Day was true, the way it would all feel great when money comes by. So these ideologies are the most common and the most mainstream of libertarian ideologies. So for the most moderate one, we have classical liberalism. Classical liberalism main proponent was John Locke, and eventually people such as Adam Smith and Thomas Jefferson. Clalibs believe in liberty individualism, but not ultra-individualism, and still believe in the rule- OH SHUT UP DOG! <laughs> but most of the time, a classical liberal and a libertarian would get along. They would just agree on the more specific, minor policy. Clalibs and libertarians are alike, so that most classical liberals call themselves libertarians for simplicity's sake. Now we're getting to the more mainstream libertarian ideologies, which are not moderate like classical liberalism or radical like anarcho-capitalism, but a mix in between. So the first ideology on this list is my personal ideology, paleo-libertarianism. Paleo-libertarians are libertarians but socially conservative. They also have a slight tendency to be more nationalistic and protectionist which they are heavily similar to national libertarianism, which many are both, including myself. National libertarians are nine times out of ten usually paleo-libertarians, but with more nationalistic tendencies. On the opposite end of the progressive conservative spectrum are the bleeding heart libertarians, which are socially progressive libertarians and focus more on social justice and have no national tendencies at all. And they also think paleo-libs are racist and which paleo-libs think back that they are degenerates. Yeah, there's a lot of infighting going on right here. 
Mainstream libertarianism, or libertarianism as we just call it, is the main ideology of the modern libertarian party. Pretty much neutral between paleo libs and bleeding heart libs, but have been more, moving a little bit more progressive lately. The final one on the list is monarchism, aka a night watchman state. And do you remember that uh, memes I mentioned earlier about libertarianism? Well, uh, take a look. Should someone have to have a government issued license to drive a car? Hell no! What's next? Requiring a license to make toast in your own damn toaster? The license to drive? You know, I'd like to see some competency exhibited by people before they drive. Monarchists are the guys booing in the video. While they may seem like ANCAPs, they are asking for the abolishment of state. That we know. They certainly are the more radical monarchists, but they certainly are monarchists. Monarchists believe in a highly limited government only providing stuff such as emergency services, courts, and the military, but not as radical for asking for the abolition of the state. Get the hell off me property, hurrah, hurrah. Get a taste of me M60, hurrah, hurrah. My legal wrath is ready now to play. While the libertarians I've talked about are more in favor of limited government, these libertarians are advocating for the complete abolition of the state. And because I'm not as versed in these ideologies, I will be handing off the mic to an ant captain himself, Cappy the Porcupine. Hello everyone, my name is Cappy the Porcupine and Cynical Chicken has asked me to speak about some ideologies he doesn't understand, so let us begin with anarcho-capitalism. Anarcho-capitalism is an extreme form of right-wing libertarianism, and Caps believe libertarianism taken to its logical conclusion would be total free market anarchism based on private property rights and non-aggression. Now while most classical anarchists consider capitalism as inherently antithetical to anarchist philosophy, and caps use the term capitalist to mean a system where trade and production is handled by private owners and entities without interference from a state. Anarcho-capitalist philosophy also differs from more traditional schools of anarchism in its views on property and a more relaxed view of hierarchies. Most classical schools of anarchism view ownership of property as conditional in the sense that someone must occupy and maintain the property for it to be considered that person's property and typically does not allow for absentee ownership. Anarcho-capitalist philosophy, however, allows for absentee ownership of property based on the Lockean idea that as long as you mix your labor with the land, that land becomes your property with with little to no conditions on its use, permitted that you aren't using your property in a way to harm others. For example, polluting a river that flows through other properties besides yours. Ageism is another anti-state pro-market concept. Like anarcho-capitalists, ageists tend to be very pro-market and pro-entrepreneurship. However they tend to view capitalism as inherently statist and exploitative placing it more to the left of anarcho-capitalism. That said, Ageism is really more of an action plan than a rigid ideology per se. It's a system that libertarians can utilize to remove themselves from the state by using underground markets with the aim of starving the state of tax revenue. Technically, any anarchist left or right can be considered an agorist if they choose to live counter-economically. Voluntarism is usually viewed as synonymous with anarcho-capitalism. The main difference is that voluntarism emphasizes non-aggression and consent as the key feature instead of emphasizing a particular economic solution like capitalists and communists. Voluntarism doesn't necessarily have to be capitalist. However, most voluntarists seem to lean capitalist. Thanks, Cappy. And that's it. That's all the ideologies I will be covering. Yes, I know there's plenty more ideologies out there that I did not cover. Just look at Paul Kampball Wiki. There are so many ideologies that I have not covered that still need to be covered. I might do a part two, but I'm not so sure. And if you got offended by me making a joke about your personal ideology, you guys can send your complaints to the email down below. Cynical underscore chicken at nobodycares.org. Anyways, uh, I want to do something different, and this is my way of doing it. I was able to test out style and not talk about alternate history for once and talk about my own personal politics. Uh, like, no one wants to hear that. But anyways, thanks for uh, watching. I really enjoyed making this, and I had a lot of fun making it with uh, Cappy the Hedgehog and the Christian Historian. 
Cappy's Instagram is in the link down below, and Christian Historian's YouTube channel is in the description down below. Check both of them out. They're really good. I will also be having another live stream this Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. So, be there. As always, signing off, and remember, Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill him.